Welcome to Imagine Online Magazine. I'm Kalani, and this is an introduction to ORF instruments. This is the soprano glockenspiel, and it's the highest member of the family in the register. It's uh, quite small, as you can see, and I've done a modification on this one, and I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, so this runs from C to A, like most of the ORF instruments, and we play the uh, glockenspiels with either rubber or wood mallets and these are the wood ones and it sounds like this and for the glockenspiel you want to have the mallet being held just gently in the hand mainly between the thumb and index finger and as with all ORF instruments when we play them we want to hold them in this manner and not place our finger on the top, all right? So we don't place our index finger on the top. That kind of inhibits the movement. So we want just a gentle movement like this. And the modification that I've done on this instrument is that I ran some rubber bands over the posts and I stretched them out and then I crisscrossed them over each one of the posts. And the reason I did that because if you're handing this instrument to a small child, now typically we would place this on the floor and the child would sit in front of it and play it. However, you might have a situation where the child is in a bed or you might need to make some adaptation for the child to play the instruments. And in that case, you may find that the instrument tips. And if that happens, the bars could fall off. So by putting the rubber bands on, we secure those completely to the instrument. So I actually checked this earlier and I'm quite happy with it. You can even kind of shake it a little bit and all the bars stay on. So that's something that you might choose to do. You don't have to do it, but it's a pretty good solution for keeping the bars on and it doesn't inhibit the sound. This is the alto glockenspiel and similar to the soprano, but a little bit lower range. It actually extends an octave below and unlike the soprano that was uh, C to A, the alto actually runs two octaves from C to C. So this would be the uh, soprano glockenspiel C, and then it goes up to C, and it also goes down an octave to C down here. And this one I've done a modification on as well, and what I've done on this it is, a, is I've cut some cardboard keys out the bars here. Normally we would lift the bar off like that, lifting from the pegged side up like this to take the bars off. Now it's very common that people will set up their instruments in a pentatonic scale or some other scale, but pentatonic is very common. That's one of the beauties of ORF instruments is that you can remove bars that you're not using, uh, also called keys. So in this case, I've removed all the B's and the F's, and that's so that there are no semitones left on this instrument. It's all pentatonic, um, and the smallest interval is a whole step. So the reason I've replaced those bars with cardboard bars is because often if, if children are playing, you wanna maybe have them gliss like that, up and down the instrument. That's something that's very accessible and fun. It's a nice sound. We call that might be adding a color to a piece of music. So let's say you're playing guitar or piano and a special part comes up and the child can do a little zing on the, on the glockenspiel. Uh, by placing these cardboard keys or bars in the instrument, I reduce the risk of the mallet kind of clunking along as it hits those gaps and hits the next bar that's up. So for example, if I took this one off and we're moving up, there's a chance that it's gonna catch on that. So you can uh, make your own, you know, I'd cut these out of an old box, and just make some uh, bars and that way, if you're playing, now I can hit the right notes, but let's say I'm I have less than uh, wonderful uh, hand-eye coordination, and I can just play. Sometimes I'll hit the cardboard, but instead of having that note, that B or F ring out, I just get a tapping sound. 
So that way it keeps the sonority of the music together, a uh, nice sounding instrument. And you can also play with the rubber side. And so glockenspiels, we could use the wood or we can use hard rubber. And the hard rubber sounds like this. So it's a little softer, more gentle sound. And that is the alto glockenspiel. This is the soprano xylophone. It's one of the three uh, xylophones in the ORF instrumentarium. Well, actually there's four if you include the giant contra bass bars. But as far as the three um, instruments that look like this, uh, this is the highest pitch. And this starts on the same C as the alto glockenspiel, so similar range. However, it goes up to an A, since it's a soprano instrument. As I mentioned before, a lot of the ORF instruments, most of them, except for the altos, are one and two-thirds octaves, so C to A. And it looks like this. I'll show you the other side, because there's a special feature on this one, which is a little uh, bar holder, extra bars, and we place the accidentals or sharps and flats in that space. So every ORF instrument comes with the uh, alternative bars. The alto comes with four, and the sopranos uh, and basses come with three. And in this case, I have two F sharps and a B flat, or an A sharp. So you can swap out the bars. For example, let's say I wanna play in the key of F, and I've got so from F, since I don't want to play in the Lydian mode, I have to replace that with the B flat. So I can put that aside. I can put my B flat on there, and now I can play. All right, in the key of F, or in some other key or mode. One of the things about the soprano is um, you're going to play it with uh, hard yarn, um, sometimes felt, mallets, and these are fairly hard. There's also a special feature on these instruments, which is you can put the mallets in these little holes, little mallet holders, you can use that. Um, like the other instruments, you can remove the bars that you don't necessarily want to have in the music, so you're removing those notes where the student or client could take a, a wrong step or a wrong turn musically and thereby keeping them kind of musically safe and contained within a certain scale or mode. Uh, like the glockenspiels, you can do glissandi, like that. And that is the soprano xylophone. This is the alto metallophone. And metallophones are the metal versions of the xylophones similar to the modern day vibraphone in many ways. And uh, the sound is and because this is an alto, it runs two octaves, C to C. So I want to show you a special feature of the alto metallophone, all the metallophones in fact. I have to turn it around to do that. And that is that it has a damper bar on the player side. So you could elect to engage that and then it would mute or shorten the sound. Where's the lever? There it is. Okay, so here it is open. And you can tell it rings quite a bit, a lot of sustain. If I engage this, by turning the lever, it forces this felt strip up underneath the bar ends. And we've got a more staccato effect. And because the damper bar is on the player side, the bar um, box or holder is on the other side. So we've got four Alternative bars, two B flats, and two Fs that are stored right here. So just be careful if you're moving the instrument to make sure that you pick it up this way, not that way.
so the bars stay in. And just like with all the other instruments, you can replace the keys or bars. You can take some off, you can switch them around. And as always, we're gonna hold the mallets with a loose grip and primarily between our thumb and index finger, making sure to not place the index fingers on tops, on the top of the mallets. And uh, for the alto metallophone and the alto xylophone, we're gonna use a medium yarn or felt mallets. All right, that's the alto metallophone. This is the bass xylophone. There's two bass instruments in the ORF instrumentarium, the xylophone and the bass metallophone. The only instrument that's lower is the contrabass bars, contrabass xylophone, which are individual bars, quite large, with their own resonators. The bass instruments we play with the softest mallets, in this case they're the red ones, and it sounds like this. It's uh, C to A, so one and two thirds octaves. And musically speaking, the role of the bass instruments is gonna to be to, to provide a tonal ground or harmonic ground, or what we call a bordoon, often in Orf Schulberg. A bordoon is a ostinato that is built upon the root and the fifth of the scale. So in the key of C, it would be C and Gs only. And I'll talk about those in a second. As far as playing the instrument, uh, for young children, very small children, they would probably stand at the instrument. And if then they get too tall to reach the bars comfortably, and if they're standing, it should be about waist level or a little lower. Um, you would want to put them in, a, in a, ch a chair or some sort of seat, raise them up so that they're able to address the instrument in a similar uh, position as, as I am right now. So just to facilitate that, you can do what you need to do. Um, now, if I was going to play a Bordoon on this instrument, which would be C's and G's, uh, that means I'm not going to be playing all of the other uh, bars, which there are, you know, five, um, six, seven, eight, nine bars I don't want to hit. There's four, four bars I do want to play. So I'm going to facilitate this by taking those bars off. So I'll remove D, E, F down here. And I'm careful to remove them from the peg side, A and B in the middle, and then D, E, F up here, and the A. So I'll take those off, place them carefully, and now I'm left with just C's and G's. So here are the four um, basic types of bordoons. You can play what, what we call chordal, which is C and G together. You can play a broken bordoon, which would be alternating. Also very commonly played are crossover bordoons, where you're crossing, arpeggiating. And then finally, what we call level bordoons, which are switching level, low, and high. And as always with all of the ORF instruments, we want to maintain a loose grip not placing our thumb, our, our index fingers uh, on top of the mallets, just holding between our thumbs and index, index fingers in a loose fashion and letting the sound come out. Okay, that's the bass xylophone. This has been an introduction to ORF Instruments. I'm Kalani. Thanks for joining me on Imagine the Online.